You're listening to Side by Side with Kathy Wilson, Episode 7, The Drop-Off. From the moment I was accepted by the Lions Foundation to undergo training for a guide dog, the drop-off had been looming before me. Two friends, both with guide dogs, enjoyed explaining the drop-off to me with all its horrors. This was the test that proved a new team was ready to graduate and take its place safely in regular life. Imagine being driven to a place in Oakville where you are left to find your way back to the school. It's up to you and your partner to take a return trip while under the vigilant surveillance of the trainers always nearby. I considered all the possibilities I could get hopelessly lost. We could walk into a bar and not be able to find our way out. We could fall down an open manhole. I finally had to take that imagination and turn it off completely. Wasn't I with wonderful Hickory? Would she let me make a hash of things? Greg so often told all of his class to follow your dog. That's all I needed to remember. Give the correct command and trust Hickory. I located the tactile map of Oakville and studied the names of the streets, where they went and what kind of traffic signals they had, if any. Look, Hickory, you have been up and down these streets hundreds of times when you were training with Greg. You could do this thing solo. The only difference now is that you have to take me instead of Greg. Hickory gave me a wary glance. Hellcat, if you think you are anything even minutely similar to Greg, you had better rethink the whole thing. My dog sighed and checked her bowl to be sure she hadn't left anything. It was empty, and she chose a place to lie down. Guess she considered the subject closed. Shortly after 11 in the morning, it was our turn for drop-off. Hickory and I climbed into the back seat of the van. It was my plan to concentrate on the number of turns and in what direction we were moving. This was not easy with a client representative and trainers asking questions which necessitated answers. Meanwhile, there were so many turns and double backs, and pretty soon, I had no idea where that blasted van was taking me. All at once it stopped and Bob announced, We're here, everybody out! Hickory and I made our leap from the vehicle, and then it was pulling away. See you back at school. Linda sounded confident. If she thought we could do it, then we better prove her right. There we stood on a well-shaded street. Its trees were large and had offered their shade for many years. I was pretty certain that we were not on the main drag, but I could hear the traffic nearby. Chances were good that with some thought and a bit of luck, we could figure out the direction we needed to go. I just stood there and felt the city stir around me. I noticed a breeze coming from behind me. I recognized the smell of Lake Ontario. We're near the water, Hickory. If I was back in St. Catharines, a lake would be north, but here in Oakville, it must be south. Hickory stood there waiting for her first command and I went on to reason that Lakeshore Boulevard was not a great distance from the lake, or it wouldn't be called Lakeshore Boulevard. I could hear traffic on my right about a block distance, so I'd ordered Hickory forward. She was eager to begin, and away we went. Very soon we came to an intersection. Hickory stopped at the curb. Hickory right! She turned right and once more gave a forward command. We were now moving in the direction of the traffic sound, and my optimism was beginning to shine with 100 watts of power. That happy tail was swinging in delight. I could feel the pleasure surrounding me. Great work, Hickory. You're an expert. Just as I expected, we soon found ourselves facing a busy street with lots of cars and pedestrians going about their affairs. I noticed a woman at the intersection waiting for the light to change so she could cross. Pardon me, is this Lakeshore? She replied that it was. I then asked her if Tim Hortons was on my left about three or four blocks from here. Again, she confirmed my question. So I now knew where I was and how to find our school. 
All the worries slid away as we crossed Lakeshore Boulevard. There was a firmness to Hickory's stride. It was plain to see that she was trusting me to get us back home. She was no doubt expecting treats. Hick followed my command and turned left, keeping Lakeshore on our left side. My nose was sniffing for the aroma of coffee. Hey, Hick, let's get some Timbits at Timmy's. That nose of mine was sounding the caffeine alert. I thought of the trainers who were following our course and wondered what they would think of us stopping for the donuts. I decided that I would just have to find out. It was a bit surprising when Hickory made a quick ride into Tim Hortons. We had been here before, so she must have remembered. That's really sharp. You didn't even hesitate, but just took us to the door. Smart girl. With my box of Timbits in hand, we made our way towards Kerr Street. That was the street I needed to take me back to the school, and it was quite close by. Once again, my nose was on alert for the tobacco shop near the corner of Lakeshore and Kerr. I knew we were near our destination, but where was that street? A little voice told me that I had come too far because there was a smell of fries in the air. We must be near McDonald's. Oh, no, Hickory, we've come too far. Just then, a couple passed us by with an order of fries in hand. I asked them, do you know how far Kerr Street is from here? No idea. We aren't from around here. Of all the people who were on the street, why did I have to ask tourists? Oh, Hickory, around. Hickory turned 180 degrees. I gave the forward command, and we were on our way again. I thought we needed to go back one block and then turn left and hope that it was Kerr. Maybe I would notice the smoke shop. Just as I was thinking about these revised plans, Hickory came to a sudden stop and made a grab for something on the ground. Crap, Hick, what are you doing? I made a grab for my dog's head and pried her jaws open. Wonder of wonders, there was a partially chewed French fry. Darn it all, Hickory, you are not eating al fresco today. We progressed another few steps and my blasted dog was taking another mighty lunge and gulping. There was no point in halting. She wasn't going to allow me to rob any more of her snacks. Altogether, Hickory did quite well grabbing some five tasty bits and scarfing them down. I would need to do a bit of work with my girl. Eating on the run is not acceptable. You'll probably get a detention. Hickory didn't consider this a problem. When we reached the next street, Hickory stopped at the curb where we turned left and moved forward. What a relief it was to pass by the little smoke shop. We were exactly where we should be. Two blocks later, we reached Wilson Street, and there was the Lions Foundation on the corner. What a tremendous triumph it was. Who cares about French fried misdemeanors? Hickory had brought me back safe and sound. I picked up my 70-pound Labrador and whirled her in circles. Then we had wrestling playtime on the grass. We received congratulations from the trainers who were still laughing over Hickory's antics. That's quite a trick you taught her, sort of like a canine drive through Linda could always be relied on to put a different slant on things. As I went through the doors of the school, I could tell that lunch was on the table. We heard more loud congratulations and lots of well wishes. Hickory took me to the coffee pot. I offered her a treat. She earned it. As Hickory brought me to my seat, the awareness of our growing bond came to me. I sensed the trust hovering on our horizon. Our love was a bud preparing to open. It would blossom as the bond grew. I bowed my head in thanks. God walked with us on that remarkable day. No doubt our partnership was blessed. Had you asked Hickory what she thought, she would have answered, Crazy cat? She'll do. It'll take a lot of work, but she'll do.